I wanted to jump on here really fast and let you know that I Am Salt Lake Podcast is proud to be media sponsors for this year's Downtown Farmers Market. It's every Saturday starting June 9th until October 20th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Pioneer Park right in downtown Salt Lake City. You've heard us talk about all the amazing vendors and all the amazing produce on this podcast. We're excited for the season to start, and we'll see you there. Showcasing local talent, professionals, and everyday people making Salt Lake City what it is today. It's time for another episode of the I Am Salt Lake Podcast. Welcome to episode 332 of I Am Salt Lake Podcast. My name's Chris. And my name's Chrissy. Hey, we're recording today out of our studios at Access Coworking Spaces, right in the heart of downtown Salt Lake City. Today on the podcast, we get to have a very special guest return to the show. Timothy Smith from Ogden's Own Distillery joins us again. We get to catch up with him and find out what's new with the distillery since the last time he was on the podcast, which is funny because the last time he was on the podcast was May of 2015. All the way back for episode 169. So here we are, what, three years later in May, recording with him again. We're going to get into that conversation here shortly. Timothy brought us some of their great liquors, and I was super grateful this week. I got sick and lost my voice, and I've been making hotty toddies at home with Porter's Apple. And man, it has actually really helped. Hey, this episode of the podcast is, of course, proudly sponsored by our friends at Five Wives Vodka and the Salt Lake Barber Company. We're going to tell you more about these awesome businesses and why you need to be supporting them later on in the podcast. Before we get into the conversation with Timothy, though, Chrissy, I want you to share with the listeners what you found out this past week. Well, technically, you found out and told me, but the podcast stuff you should know is coming to Salt Lake. I'm pretty sure for the first time ever, they always skip over us. And uh, when I came home and you told me, I got so excited, I woke up the baby, but I don't even care because I'm so excited. They actually aren't coming until October, but from what I hear, I would recommend getting tickets now if you're at all interested, because I hear they sell out pretty quick. At least Chrissy told me that. Well, so, I believe they sell out quick because they're the best. So we're going to put that link at IamSaltLake.com slash 332 with the episode show notes for this episode. So head on over there, pick up some tickets, and let us know if you're coming. Are they reserved seating, Chrissy? I think they are, yep. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I guess you can't sit with us. But uh, <laughs> anyway, IamSaltLake.com slash 332 for episode show notes for this episode. Head on over there and uh, pick up your tickets. All right. With that being said, let's jump into that conversation we had with Timothy Smith from Ogden's Own Distillery when he came over to our office and shared his story. I want to make a point on this recording, and we'll probably say it back in the intro. The first time you were on the podcast, Tim, 169, episode 169, in May of 2015. That's right. Here you are, May of 2018, and, and honestly, this was not even uh, planned this way. I, when I reached out to you, I had no idea. I, I knew you were on the show before, but I didn't know that it was in May. May was a good month. Yeah, you know? right? I mean, it was just, that was just pure, pure coincidence. Uh, so here you are, what is that, three years later? Two years? No. One. Three. Three years later. Yeah. What's been going on, Tim? Oh, man, a lot of what we were talking about last time, we've got a few new brands since then, and uh, the company is just uh, continually growing. I think the last time I was on... The, the, well, the last time you were on, you only had the the uh, Porter's uh, Fire. Porter's Fire. And the Vi- Five Wives Vodka. And and then Underground being oh, the, underground. You know, underground. That's the brand that launched the company. And we were... You were working on the gin. Working on the gin. And yeah. that, that was something that, you know, it had been in process since like 2010, but uh, just didn't get any love. We were weeks away from the very first show we hadn't oh, played. Oh, that's right. The, the Underground uh, Cash, which yes. was Underground Cash Bar. We lost the bar just because it was uh, too much to say. And uh, yeah, it was easier to uh, cut that down a little bit and just called it Underground Cash. So yeah, it's been a solid three years and... Yeah, since then we launched uh, Porter's Peach Whiskey. Uh, yeah, Madame Paterini Gin and uh, the Apple, the Porter's and Porter's mm. Apple. Porter's Apple, I which so is a many favorite good stories. of mine. I feel like your alcohols have given me friends. Like I, I was at uh, one of the the state liquor stores, and I the guy in front of me was buying uh, Five Wives, 
And I was like, oh my gosh, have you tried the Porter's Peach yet? And we started talking and he ended up buying my my bottle of Five Wives for me. <laughs> and I was like, well, thanks, friend. But uh, and then, yeah, he's going to go it, ahead and try that. Well, And then you made a note here, Chrissy, which I'm glad you did. So we set up <laughs> a booth this past weekend at the Open Streets uh, Festival here in downtown Salt Lake City. And we had a listener of the podcast. Will you tell this one, Chrissy? Because yeah. he talked to you. He came was... up and talked to me and he said, you know what? I love you guys, but I blame you for my drinking problem. <laughs> and I was like, well, is it really a problem? I mean, if you're enjoying it, he said, I just, you know, I tried Five Wives because of you and it's the best. I love it. It's all I buy now. And I, I was like, well, <laughs> you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm proud. I love, I love to hear that. Yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> you know, you're, you're turning this state into alcoholics, Tim. How do you feel about that? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Maybe that's the wrong terminology to use, right? I don't know. <laughs> hey, I, if I they're think, functional, it's okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, an owner of a McDonald's, I mean, you know, is he making America fat or, uh, you know, he's just providing some comfort. And as long as people are enjoying McDonald's responsibly, I think you can stay slim and healthy. Well, and, and that's a lot of truth to that. You can't yeah. blame people because, I mean, you can get overweight really on eating anything yeah, you know and, totally and i mean booze are there's those of us uh that are responsible which on that note i think we should we have a shot here are we taking a shot to responsibility five wives is this all what we all have a shot of we right all, now is five yep. wives yeah five Excellent. wives original and uh you know for the record it cheers. has been it has been a minute since i've had a shot here so it has been a while cheers guys <laughs> cheers cheers thank you that's a good vodka you know it's not often that you do a shot of vodka that's true but um it's usually a mixer or with a mixer, but. But you can really taste the spring water. I mean, that's what makes this one so special is just yeah. the, you know, the hikes up to the spring and giving it that, uh, giving it that nice flavor and mouthfeel. Now, how often are you hiking up there these days, Tim? I know cause you, I follow you on Facebook, so you're always posting pictures on there. It's pretty consistently once a week, sometimes more, um, whether it's uh, you know, rain or shine, I'm, I'm going up there and, and pulling water out of the spring. Has anybody followed you yet? Like, uh, like wanting to know where that spring is at? Cause I know you keep it pretty hidden, right? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> it's not necessarily a secret, but it's, you know, it's on private property. Um, I've taken a few people up to the spring. Um, very few have gone back a second time. Um, as soon as you put a bottle of water in their hands and they have to Hike it out of there. Hike it out of there. Yeah, it's their last yep. trip most of the time. <laughs> so you hike up there about once a week getting, you know, you just hike down these gal. I mean, you, you have to make a few trips, right? Because you're not hiking. Right. Yeah, I have to make a few trips. I, I'll normally take 10 five-gallon water jugs and um, and I'll go up there two or three times in that day. Wow. And, and pull, you know, fill them up and pull them out. And it's uh, it just depends on the time of year in the... In the wintertime, it is it is a nightmare um, because I'm literally well over a quarter of a mile of a pretty good increase in elevation, then a drop you know, down into the spring, and then, of course, hiking it back out. Uh, but in the summertime, I can get there really close with my old Subaru, uh, maybe you know, 300 yards of a, you know, a good uphill getting out of there. So you're doing this year-round? Yeah, yeah, No year matter round. what the weather's like? Exactly. Wow. I want to make the point here right now. I know I mentioned how you were on an episode 169. That's kind of where we found out your story, Tim. And I want to emphasize this since we're talking about the water is that I have a lot of respect for you, Tim. Cause I mean, you are, you're, you're, I mean, you basically started this whole thing. I mean, I know you have partners. We've had Steve on, which is, is, uh, he's our general manager. He's your now. general manager. Yep. But I mean, you still get out in the trenches. You're not just sitting up in a fancy office with a nice suit on. You still get out and, take care of business, right? Am I wrong by saying that? No, absolutely. I, I love staying on the production side. Although I do consider myself an entrepreneur, I don't think that, you know, a distiller of alcohol really kind of uh, covers everything. But at the same time, I really love the nuts and bolts and thing of things. You know, I, I, I love being part of it. There's something about these products um, that I'm really tied to. And I just feel like I need to be there on bottling days. You know, I need to be there blending it. I need to be there proofing and, and um, you know, and just ensuring the quality is there. Um, I'm sure there will be a time where I, I step away from it. Sure. But, uh, I mean, you you have to, I guess, get to that point. Yeah, probably. But, where... I mean, it really seems like you are a hands-on maker. Definitely. Like, you are the originator of every flavor, right? Yes. And I think that's just incredible. Which, again, go back and, and listen to uh, 169 to find out more of your story. It looks like you threw a few questions in here, Chrissy, I right? Did. Like kind of, did you get your computer pulled up over I there? I did, yeah. So 
it looks like, did you add this one? What made you set up shop in Ogden, right? Because we, I guess we yeah. didn't really cover that in the yeah, first time we you didn't. were on the podcast. Like, you originally came out to Hill Air Force Base, right? Right. And that was your life in Utah. Mm-hmm. What made you go up to Ogden and decide to set up shop there and start a distillery? It was just mainly the story of Ogden, you know, being the crossroads of the West. And um, I was living in Salt Lake, working on underground. Uh, we lived on First Avenue um, in the little uh, Hillcrest Apartments uh, oh, yeah. right across the street from that ABC market, I think it was at the time. Maybe it's still there. On First Avenue there, I think yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. No, I know exactly where that yeah, is. Yeah, we were uh, uh, south-facing, fourth floor, walk-up, no air conditioning. Uh, you could see the temple from the deck. Um, that was where I was originally working on underground. But the whole concept of underground was inspired by Ogden. And, uh, you know, the whole stories about the tunnel systems and opium dens and gambling. And, and I, I just loved that concept of talking to some of our more uptight friends that were, you know, consider Ogden the armpit of Utah. I definitely didn't see it that way. Uh, anytime visiting Ogden down on 25th Street, I, I was, well, I still am. I'm still inspired when I walk up and down that street and I, I just love it. And there's just so many cool things about it. So I, I it just had to, it just had to be in Ogden. And Real estate in Salt Lake. Let's be oh, honest. Well, yeah, that's very fair. I, is it and, still pretty cheap up in Ogden to buy a house? It is. It really is pretty cheap. The you know the prices are going up, but it's still a, not that bad of a place to live. I mean, I live in Pleasant View, which is just on the north end, kind of looking back down on Ogden. Geez, it's been probably fourteen or fifteen years, but I spent like a hundred and forty grand on a little house, but with a half acre, tons of fruit trees, great view, you know, and um, I'm still there now. I'm, just, How long of a drive is that down to Salt Lake then for you? 35 minutes. Oh, wow. That's well, thank not bad. you for driving down. But here. I mean, sorry. <laughs> I was thinking from it's Provo. Not. Provo's a little bit worse. No, it's not that bad at all. And it's even a more comfortable, you know, closer to an hour ride on the front runner. But okay. um, it is possible to it's do. It's totally yeah. possible. It's really close. And, uh, you know, I know when I lived in Salt Lake, a lot of people kind of just had their ideas about Ogden mm-hmm. being, uh, you know, scary and dangerous. But <laughs> I just love that town. It it seems like it's getting cleaned up a little bit. The thing that I really, really love about you and your products and the whole thing is that I'm a history nerd, right? And so the fact that you chose everything that you chose specifically very um, history-based, like everything has a story. Yeah. And it's all connected. And that's almost more fascinating to me than the actual liquor side of things. But I love that that you have that. I mean, it's, it's just such a great story. And I love that you put the time and the effort into it. Cause a lot of people don't do that. Well, thank you. I, to, to me, it was low hanging fruit, you know, because I'm kind of the same way when it comes to marketing, it's, you know, people, places and things. And, mm-hmm. and there's just so much great history and so many great stories. And, you know, th- there have been, mul- there were multiple business plans before, you know, this one was executed, but, you know, naming things after yourself um, or just kind of, pulling these sterile ideas out of nowhere. I, I think there's just so much, so many more great subjects to focus on when it, when it came to actually doing the branding. Yeah. And the, the story of, I can't remember their last name, the sisters on the five wives bottle. Oh, the Barrison sisters. The Barrison sisters. I was so fascinated by that when I listened to the episode that you guys recorded three years ago that I went on Google and I just studied them. It was so interesting. You know, what's so funny, too, is when I first learned about the Barrison sisters, there really wasn't anything in there. And they they gained, I think, their first Wikipedia entry just from the Five Wives controversy in wow. Idaho. <laughs> and now, now there's a bunch of stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, and then you mentioned the Porter's fire or the Porter, uh, how it is, like 66.6% or something on the label. Yeah. yeah, 66.6 proof. Yeah, yeah 66 point. Now, the Madame Paterini wasn't out yet. Did you do anything fun with the label on that one, Tim? Well, that one, it, that one just fell in our lap. Um, we had focused on a few different brands of historical moments that, to be honest, in hindsight, I'm really glad we didn't focus on. And I think I can talk about it just because we're not going to, uh, we're not going to use it. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> one that I just really, uh, I, I loved talking about. I had a lot of laughs, and it just seemed like such a great idea. You know, with the gin. Uh, you know, focusing on all of these um, botanicals, um, 
And I, I just think when I think of Jen, you know, I think of, you know, Mountain Meadows and there's a story attached to Mountain Meadows. And I was thinking of using that name, Mountain Meadows, but then just having some very discreet references, like maybe way off in the distance, a tiny little circle of covered wagons or something like that. Yeah. But I literally started having bad dreams about it. And then just thinking about people saying, why, you know, why, why would yeah. you bring that up? It is clever, but too soon. Yeah, right? yeah, like yeah. It's even, always too soon. Even still too soon. Way too soon. I actually never learned about that, the M- Mountain Meadow Massacre, until I moved to Utah. Really? Yeah. I guess it wasn't really a talked about thing it was outside a of Utah. It was very not talked no. about thing. Yeah. Now, what products are all of your products gluten free? And the only reason I bring that up is because I know it was mentioned in our Facebook group and we have quite a few listeners that are don't do the gluten thing. The Porter's whiskeys, sorry. To yeah, cut no, into no, you're, that fine, there. you're fine. You're fine. Uh, the Porter's whiskeys are not technically gluten free. And when I say technically, it's just because of the Canadian whiskey with the rye grains. Okay. Um, however, there's not a drop of gluten in the product, but we cannot use the term gluten free just because any, uh, say an, for, for alcohol, if it does come from a grain, you can't use gluten free. Uh, even even though it doesn't have it, um, in, in the distillation process, um, pretty much any gluten is going to be left behind. But for someone with celiacs and just you know really watching out for it, no, the Porter's products are not. But our other ones, uh, you know, Underground Five Wives, uh, the Madame Paterini Gin, are you know one hundred percent gluten free, being a corn based spirit. Right on, right on. I just wanted to bring that up right off top. Also, I'm sure. You- your products are available in a lot more locations now, a lot more states uh, yeah. compared to three years ago when you were on like the podcast, Idaho. Uh, like Idaho <laughs> for, for one, uh, which that was such a funny story. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, and you might not know this, Tim. I don't know how much you know. You keep up on everything, but I saw a post on Facebook. There's like an app that people out of state can order. Yeah. yeah. Talk about that a little bit because we have a lot of out of state listeners Uh, I know even on the East Coast, that would love to probably order your product. Yeah, there's a uh, site. uh, It's a store in California, High Time Wines. Go to hightimewine.com. Those guys carry our products. And if you're willing to buy more than one bottle, you will probably have the product delivered to your doorstep for cheaper than we can buy it here in Utah. Uh, Those guys are really kind to us as far as the margins that they take. And being the fact that they are a wholesaler and a retailer... Um, you know, you kind of cut out the middleman, sure. uh, so to speak. So, um, that's a great place to buy our products online. Um, surprisingly enough, our distribution has actually shrank a bit, uh, but that's been purposefully so we can focus, uh, on markets where we want to, uh, apply our efforts. We grew extremely fast coming out of the gate. The funny thing is with products like ours, they're reasonably priced. The quality is off the charts. And then we've got great branding as well. Just about any distributor that you talk to is going to want the products, but then comes the fact of actually selling it. And um, it's a tough world out there. And so we've... We're definitely trying to be a little bit more laser focused on our approach to marketing rather than just um, shipping our products to any distributor that's interested. Uh, we're looking for a, a, you know, a full package of a distributor that's really going to be pushing our, uh, that's going to be pushing our brands and out there really showing them attention. Most states carry it though too now or any states that you know of? I mean, I guess that's, there's a lot of states out there, so it'd be hard to know every state that carries there's like it, I guess. like 50 or something? Yeah, like yeah. 50 states yeah. here. That's what I heard anyway. Yeah, we're, we're still uh, mainly Pacific Northwest okay. as far as okay. like uh, heavy distribution. Uh, Michigan is, uh, is a state that we're working on right now. Uh, rather than hitting the surrounding states as well, we're just focusing on Michigan, focusing on the liquor stores. And uh, with it being an open state, there are hundreds and thousands of liquor stores rather than the 40 some odd liquor stores that we're used to in this state. And then you can just do the math with how many bars on top of that. Uh, there's just a, you know, a lot of people and, uh, uh, you know, a lot of territory to cover. But now, mi- now, what do you mean an open state? That just means less um, legalities. Yeah, issues. less regulation where the, the state doesn't have um, doesn't have as much uh interest uh, in in the uh in the uh, uh selling of the alcohol 
where um, Utah controls not only the distribution but the retail. Michigan is much more just wide open where you have a uh, a privately owned distributorship as well as privately owned liquor stores that you're selling to. I'm going to be a bit biased and request that you look into Wisconsin because hmm. when I visit my homeland, I'm going to want to have to I'm going to want to go to a liquor store and pick up a bottle. I definitely love to be there. Yeah, you should do it. I'm sure Tim's not over here being like, oh, well, no, not going to go to Wisconsin. It is, it is fun, though, to go to- I like, will be your advocate. When we went to Wisconsin, Tim, I mean, as you know, I mean, you, when you go to a liquor store outside of Utah, you just feel like, wow, this is awesome. Could yeah. you imagine how it would be nice that would be to have a liquor store? I mean, just some of the little mini bottles Oh my gosh, you just want and, the mini bottles because they're so cute. And then, yeah, the, the little- <laughs> Uh, with those little vodka packets, they said like women hide them in their, oh, yeah. in their uh, shirts. Oh, we learned so much in Wisconsin. <laughs> they do. They have like all these things you can hide in your clothes so you can sneak them in if you're a woman. Now, don't you guys make mini bottles, right? But you just can't sell them in Utah. Correct. Yeah, isn't that crazy, Chrissy? They yeah, it is. Them, it they, is crazy. What is the Utah? Is Utah laws getting any easier or are they getting harder, Tim? I would say it's easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess that's kind of a weird for easier, isn't it? Really, yeah, really the simpler. Simpler. Maybe. Uh, for me, just show me the boundaries and I'm going to operate inside of those boundaries. Every state has got their quirks. And me personally, coming from the Pentecostal environment, you know, as a kid, then going into the military, and I would say that the military was kind of like a halfway house for me, and then being l- turned loose on the streets of Utah. For me, this place is ultimate freedom, so I don't quite understand. Yeah, there's some silly laws, but Texas has some silly laws. Just about every state that you look into might have something that's a little bit quirky. Personally, I, I'm I'm not largely affected by them. By the laws mm-hmm. here in Utah. Yeah. What's the hardest? Is there like one law that's the hardest law to deal with here in Utah? The, the most difficult thing for us is tastings. I want oh, to be yeah. able to just buy everybody a drink. Mm-hmm. If I could just buy everybody a drink, um, I think we would be a lot bigger than we are. Now, so, what do you mean buy every like that come to your warehouse there? Is that yeah, sure. I would I would just give it away. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> just, well, I mean, just You're gonna have a lot of hobos yeah. hanging out outside. <laughs> your door. Of, you know? You'll have me hanging out outside. <laughs> I do have a question though. Like, you come from a, a very religious background. And I'm not super familiar with other religions. I grew up LDS, but how do your parents feel about you being a distiller? Is that an issue with your Pentecostal background? I think enough time has gone by to where they've very much warmed up to it and, and are proud of me for being entrepreneurial and um, and just getting out there and having a successful business. Um, I, I haven't really received any grief from either of them, though had I told them I was going to be a distiller as a teenager – uh, I, I don't know that I would have been able to leave home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> do, do they drink at all? No, no. I was going to say, have no. you had any five wives or any shots with them? Or no, no, have have not uh, have not shared any alcohol with my parents. But uh, but they do like to uh, they like to have a bottle from the first run of each new brand, and you know they they definitely uh, collect it. They yeah, keep it yeah, on yeah, the shelf. Like really? That's cool. it all. I mean, that, now did you have siblings? I can't remember. If you yeah, did. I have two brothers, one and older and one younger. Do they drink at all, or not really? Uh, uh, not really that much. My older brother uh, is, uh, I would say, still in the religion and uh, uh, very conservative. My younger brother, yes. Yeah, he's, he lives in San Antonio and uh, he gets care packages for me quite often. Oh, I love it. So when when did you first learn? I know that you said you kind of experimented and when you were in the Air Force, you made hooch for yeah, everybody. Yeah. Like what got you interested? What was your first experience even figuring all of that out? It's it's really crazy. I. He so, might not want to admit to it here. Come Chris, on, because... <laughs> I want to know. What if I want to try? <laughs> well, the the funny thing with me is, is that it was really intuitive. Um, it's something that I don't really know how to explain. I used to tell people that my grandfather was a distiller and I learned from him mm-hmm. um, just as to make the story easy. Yeah. However, years later, after I had been in the business, I found out that he had been messing around with alcohol and had done some distilling. However, I didn't know that. Okay. So I, I, I think maybe it was, uh, maybe there's something to be blood. said about genetics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, I started out, um, you know, I started out with a little pot still. I, you know, I created the column and the pot and everything and, and, you know, was 
uh, working off of my stove. Uh, the pot still graduated into another bigger pot still, and then yet a bigger pot still with a bigger column. And then I realized that to really go into large scale ethanol production, that I needed to create a continuous column, which is uh, you know a multitude of columns, like five columns in a row. Uh, for concentrating and then diluting it back down and then reconcentrating the product to get a super clean distillate. And that definitely came after meeting a few chemical engineers and reading, uh, you know, reading books about the industry. Cause this was before the internet, right? Right. This is pre-internet. And so yeah. I just had a few books, uh, in my possession and, uh, and then just a lot of intuition. Um, it, it was, uh, was it the anarchist cookbook? I remember that was really. Popular. I did have that. Yeah, that was. Did really you? I still do. Oh, I'm like out of the club. You Gosh, guys both had it. It's been forever since I looked at that thing. Was there anything even good in it? I can't remember. <laughs> I can remember. A, a, you know, what was there? One of those, uh, some type of uh, booby trap with a shotgun shell and, and, and <laughs> <laughs> napalm. Do you remember? Uh, the, there was a book. Steal this book. It was like Abby Hoffman. I think wasn't oh, that yeah. his name? He was like some crazy. Uh, 60s hippie guy I don't know it was about like stealing stuff I, I remember that actually <laughs> well I think I remember it from the back of like uh, Guns and Ammo magazine or something yeah. where there was you know you'd see the anarchist cookbook and get even and how to get even better or, you know all those <laughs> all those books <laughs> let's actually we need to take a quick break here yeah. to play a message from our sponsors that way you guys could pour uh, a little shot of gin we're going to try we're some doing that. Madame Paterini and then we'll come right back we got more questions for Tim so hang tight All right, it's that time of the podcast where Chrissy and I, we take a few minutes of your time to tell you about our awesome sponsors. These are some great businesses that are helping keep this podcast going, so please support them in everything that they have going on. All right, this episode of the podcast is proudly sponsored by our friends at Five Wives Vodka. You know, when you're over in Texas, you can drink Tito's, but when you're here in Salt Lake City, you better be drinking Five Wives Vodka. So the next time you're at your local bar, make sure to ask for Five Wives Vodka by name or stop by the local uh, state liquor store, pick up a bottle of Five Wives Vodka for you and the wife. Maybe you're going to your buddy's barbecue this weekend to watch a little uh, sports on the TV or something. Pick up a bottle of Five Wives Vodka for that. They actually have three different flavors. A lot of people don't know about all three different flavors. They have the original Five Wives Vodka. It's made from Utah Mountain Spring Water. It's 100% distilled corn spirit and gluten-free. The spring is up in Ogden Canyon. It's inaccessible by vehicle. So like in this interview with Timothy, we talk about him hiking out the five gallons of water at a time. Fascinating story. I remember the first time I met Timothy, you told me that story and I almost didn't believe you. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's, it's honest to God, true it's story. So the way he, he hikes, showed us pictures. So if you, I mean, if you follow him online, you can actually see him hiking out the water out of Ogden Canyon. Tell the listeners about the Five Wife Sinful, Chrissy. Oh man, the Five Wife Sinful is a flavored vodka that tastes like a delicious cinnamon roll. It's not like the other cinnamon products that give you a sweet, sugary aftertaste. It's just like a morning cinnamon roll, and it only has 76 calories per ounce. There's also the Five Wives Heavenly, which is a flavored vodka with a delicious vanilla taste. Heavenly's rich, buttery vanilla flavor. It comes through without coating your taste buds with sugar, and this results in more vanilla and less calories. Next time you're at the uh, state liquor store, pick up a bottle of Five Wives for you and your buddy. Ask for it by name the next time you're at your local bar. Go to FiveWivesVodka.com for more information and recipes and make sure you're connected with them on uh, Facebook. Leave a message for them. Say, hey, guys, thank you for sponsoring my favorite podcast. I am Salt Lake. Hey, this episode of the podcast is also sponsored by the Salt Lake Barber Company. I actually just finished up getting a haircut from Isaac over there a few hours ago. And it was really cool because on the way home, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I get to record a podcast and talk about the Salt Lake Barber Company uh, this evening. They're located right at 10 East, 800 South, corner of 8th and Main, right there in the central 9th district of downtown Salt Lake City. If you're familiar where the old Sears is, they're kind of uh, south of there. Uh, they offer haircuts and beard trims, which I get from time to time. 
They also offer straight razor shaves. Never gotten a straight razor shave. One day, maybe I will, though. Not only do they give you a sweet fade, they're also a true community barber shop, and they focus on providing the best work environment possible for their barbers so that the barbers can give you the highest quality experience while you're in the chair. You know, I know a lot of you listeners are familiar with the traditional let's walk into the barber shop, right? They do take walk-ins if they're available, but you get a guaranteed appointment by going online to saltlakebarbercode.com, which is going to take you to a calendar, allow you to pick out your barber and the services that you need. Again, that's saltlakebarbercode.com. That's where you can schedule your appointment. They also just got some new shirt designs made with their tagline on the back, Cuts, Shaves, Vibes. And I actually got one today. It's actually a really cool shirt. So they have you know clothing in there. They also have a lot of different grooming products from a lot of local companies that you could pick up there after you get your hair cut. Again, saltlakebarbercode.com is where you can go to book your appointment. They also have a professional drop-off shoeshine service. Again, they're located at 10 East, 800 South. Head on over to saltlakebarbercode.com to book your appointment with them today. You know, so there's a question in here. And I'm glad, I think Chrissy wrote this in here, and I'm glad you wrote it in, Chrissy, because I would have never thought to ask this, but are you going to be making an absinthe? Because you were talking about some absinthe that you were kind of working on. And that's kind of a selfish question, because I really just kind of want to try it. You know, just this Sunday, yesterday, (laughs) I was in the backyard uh, just burning tons of, uh, you know, tree limbs and, 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 uh, it's in my backyard is a mess, but yeah, fixing some irrigation, but I have five very good sized, they're probably over 10 years old now, uh, absinthe plants, Artemisia absinthium in my backyard. And I've made small batches in the past, but sometimes years will go by where I just kind of let it go. But um, I was just looking at them and caring for them and cleaning away all the dead waste and making sure I was cleaning out the weeds that were kind of growing in between them. And just that smell uh, got me kind of excited. And I was thinking, you know, who cares if I only sell a couple of cases of it? Who, You know, why not? And yeah. so I definitely have the idea sparked right now. I, I think it would be really fun to make a small batch. The the only thing about the absinthe that makes it a little bit disheartening is that you can't leave the thujone in it. So the one thing that makes it a little bit fun, very mild hallucinogenic effect, um, you know, it needs to be down to like 10 parts per million, which sometimes makes it very bitter. I, or I just personally think that it makes it somewhat bitter kind of difficult to drink, but the only benefit that you're getting is the alcohol. But at the same time, there are a lot of other herbs and spices that, um, you know, can help that effect along that are still legal. And I mean, to be honest, that's how underground was spawned because underground originally started out as absinthe. And then I pulled the wormwood back and started focusing on other herbs and spices, but I wouldn't count it out. I, I think that, um, it's something that even just on a small scale, something that I don't even try to present to the DABC, but mm-hmm. it's just available at the shop, uh, you know, in Ogden, there's a, there's a good possibility that I make one this year. See, I would love this. Also, I have a few friends from my childhood who are very, uh, they're like absinthe experts and they like mm. to try all the different varieties. And I just think it would be amazing to tell them about it. What, yeah. what, what exactly? I mean, does it taste good? I've never, I've never tried it. Can I it. go buy some at the liquor store right now? Some absinthe? Yeah. Yeah. There, there are multiple brands that you can buy. Um, and it gets me it, I all hallucinate? No. Okay. I was going to say, oh, well, 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 let's go. That's out, man. Liquor store's right down the road here. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the unfortunate part of it. You're definitely going to taste, uh, you know, the the sage or the wormwood in there. But as far as having, uh, you know, a great effect on you, not necessarily. Now, you were mentioning maybe making some and just selling it out of your shop not going through the DABC, do you not have to uh, put everything past them that you make or what? Yeah, we don't. Well, I take that back. We, yeah, I mean, I'm we not really to, do. I, I have to um, put you on the spot. However, <laughs> um, it's not like it's a, it's not necessarily a listing process. Sure. As, as long as I have a federally approved label, it's mainly just showing them, hey, we're going to sell this in the liquor store and they can approve or 
technically a package agency. Sure. They would approve us to sell it in the package agency. I got you. And I'm, you know, I know it's tough, you know, you don't want, I'm not trying to put you on the spot here. I was just curious of how that works with the different uh, distilleries. Now, now what are your thoughts? I mean, there is a lot of liquor being made in Utah anymore, right? There is a lot of distilleries, a lot of, I mean, you have uh, all different liquors being uh, distilled here. What, what are your thoughts on all that? I'm excited to see them come. Um, I feel like I was definitely a front runner when it comes to the micro distillery business. It, it really makes me smile to see these guys come along. There's there's some some ways that I would say that it's easier for these guys. Um, they can easily look at High West. They can look at me. Um, you guys or, laid the groundwork. We, we we definitely laid some groundwork. We we've had some success, and it's a lot easier to get a business loan. Um, or it's a lot easier to round up some investor money. But then at the same time, they are definitely competing with, uh, you know, uh, more and more brands, uh, you know, coming into the state. Whereas I had the luxury of uh, kind of cementing my position with Underground and Five Wives Vodka and then Porter's Whiskeys before these guys had really gotten a foothold. That being said, it just takes time, perseverance, keep the quality high and you know what people expect and they're all going to do fine there's room for us all to survive what is there like a a one or two pieces of advice that you would tell a new distillery opening up i i think my biggest piece of advice is just be patient yeah you know if if you're in this for the money good luck (laughs) (laughs) because it's been uh you know it's been a solid nine years for us In business, uh, I actually licensed Ogden's own distillery in 2006, but I didn't make my first sale until 2009. I think some of the new players think that I'm a lot bigger than I am, that I'm a lot more successful than I am. But realistically, it's it takes a lot of money to run a business like this. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a payday. Uh, You know, we've all seen High West and those guys got bought out last year and for a good chunk of change, right? right. A good oh, chunk yeah. Of change. Well, very, how much was it? Like a million billion or something? Handsome. A million billion. <laughs> a million billion. I know. <laughs> I think that was, I think no, that I was specifically a one hundred and sixty million. Yeah, no, it was a it was a big chunk of change. Yeah, I remember no. reading good in for the them. in the newspaper or something. I'm yeah. like, get at it. And isn't it the same guy up there working still? Like, didn't he stay working there? I think they it? all stayed on. Yeah, I, but just took the money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, kudos to them. Would was, you do yeah. something like that? I mean, why would Oh, absolutely. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As as long um I of course I would I would not want to be shut out. I'd love to still be able to tell stories and mm-hmm. and sell the be product involved. and be involved. If that happened, would you go start another business? I mean, you you're a natural entrepreneur. Would you just keep creating? I probably would just keep creating. Yeah. They would have to literally buy me out and <laughs> and take lure everything me away in. from you <laughs> they'd have to lure me in to stay because yeah. i'm i'm just basically entrepreneurial since i've been in business with ogden's own um you know i've gone full bore into another business and which started and actually crashed and burned but i have multiple business ideas that i'm constantly working on it's part of my daily morning routine of just researching and um, contemplating and just because of the fact that when it comes to Ogden's own distillery, I can definitely think a lot about new brands and I can think about new concepts and whatnot, but realistically you can only create so many brands and, and put them out there and actually support them with the team that you have. Right. And, um, it's easy to almost get maniacal that way and just, you know, creating all of these different products. So I I think to just kind of satisfy those creative urges, I'm constantly researching uh, you know, different businesses um, and just, you know, just trying to learn uh, from them. And I think I get a lot of satisfaction in just just that researching yeah. and just seeing how how things are made. I think we as a couple have the same problem. Yeah, this is like you're really speaking to me because we're both entrepreneurial and whatever we're doing is really fun. But we always see other things and we're like, oh, man. We could do this and we could do that. Well, the problem with, with Chrissy is I'll what? pitch an idea to her <laughs> and by the end of the day, she'll have a website bought and a business license gotten. <laughs> she'll have an order of whatever wholesale supply. And I'll be like, whoa, that was just an idea. Look, I'm a doer. <laughs> if you say it, it's happening. What are, I mean, do you care to share what some of your business ideas are or is that kind of talk? I mean, if you would rather know. Well, I'll, I'll talk about one that um, that crashed and burned. Sure, sure. Um 
It was called American Kennel Company. It's really fun is because you get to use the, the uh, acronym AKC. What it was was a company that fabricated uh, dog kennels. Oh. Super high end. Yeah. Very high end dog kennels. We're talking like six gauge wire mesh, really heavy, heavy tubing, double dip, galvanized, stainless steel hardware latches. I mean, say the dog kennel that somebody might buy at a home improvement store or online for $300. I was selling it for $3,000. There are lots of people that like to spend that kind of money. On their dogs, yeah. especially. Well, they want the dogs. best, <laughs> yeah. right? And, and professional kennel services, uh, you know, these big buildings that are being built out, you know, they want their place to look professional. I have this friend of mine who's a great web developer. He's great at search engine optimization. He actually helped a Utah company launch a kennel section of their company. They were a fabrication company and they had this, uh, this kennel idea that they wanted to start. He built their website, helped source the materials, and they were basically taking powder-coated panels that they had custom-made in China, but they were opening up containers and filling orders. And this went from, boy, the first year, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars, and you know, just a few years later, they were making multi-millions of dollars just selling these kennels online. And they were very high-priced, but the quality wasn't necessarily there. They were rusting out in just a couple of years. But he built that and he saw it from inception. And so I thought, <laughs> I can do that. We can do this. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and he had, he had basically, I'd found out about it about, you know, with us just having drinks on my back deck, talking about how he hated his job and he hated dealing with all of the complaints and whatnot. And I'm like, tell me, you know, what it is you're doing. And so um, I did kind of like you did. We, for out of one, chatting it up on the deck and I'm saying, and I said, do you really want to do this? And it had taken me years to actually um, have a little bit of money to invest in something like this. But I had this concept of wouldn't it be great if we start this 100% employee owned company, American kennel company, just, uh, you know, um, everybody that works there has ownership. We make these super high quality products and, you know, and sell them to the public. So I go and I buy the website. He starts he starts creating the website, drawing it all up. I go up to New Core Steel, make uh, have these custom grates built. Go down and uh, you know source basically multiple steel companies. Um, I I've got TIG welders, MIG welders, huge band saws, drill press. All in all, between myself and then calling on my mom after I started running out of money, I rounded up <laughs> about $70,000. Oh, wow. We were going, it took about a year, about six months of all inception. I built the prototypes. Um, I built the jigs for mass production. Um, and I was doing this from about 4.30 in the morning till 8.30 in the morning before I would go to the distillery to have just a regular production day. And I did, and we got the thing off the ground first about the first six months out of the gate, we just had a really small sales. Um, but then all of a sudden it just took off. And, um, it was at that point to where I had met uh, a couple of fabricators and told them the, the plan, got them all, uh, jazzed up to, you know, to do it. They were much better welders than I was. So got those guys going, but then tragedy <laughs> struck. You know, we're, we're having success at the distillery. I need to be focusing my time there, but I've done what I said I was going to do. I built the prototypes. Um, we've got a website up and going, we've got sales going. Uh, it's time for me to pull out. Mm -hmm. Now this is a business loan. You guys owe me money and you're all owners and I'm walking away with literally 10% ownership. Now it's just time to start making candles and pay me back. Wow. It was just one thing after another. Yeah. Uh, my general manager gets a DUI. <gasps> Oh no. So now he's working from home. That's okay. You know, he's a web developer. He mm -hmm. can, he can take orders from home. However, my fabricators, one gentleman, uh, was his marriage was on the rocks. His wife left him. He started doing drugs 
and oh, um, started shipping orders that were nowhere like the orders that people were ordering. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, so he was shipping the wrong orders? Yeah, oh, he's, he's shipping things that are two inches too long or, oh, or, or, wow. or hinges on the wrong side. It opens right hand instead of left hand or, you know, just and these are multi thousand pound just pallets. Just zero attention to detail. Yeah, 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 zero attention to detail. We're shipping these multi thousand dollar kennels to the east coast people are opening it up and saying what the hell Mm -hmm. and now it's too much money to even ship it back you just got to fabricate more and you know and take care of these guys and it was just a multitude of things like that that came crashing down i know enough people now to where i could easily call on some of my friends and say look i'm out of money i need money now you're my partner we're Mm -hmm. gonna get this thing keep this going However, since I had done the employee ownership plan, nobody wants in on that. It's yeah. either me and you, Timmy, or, or no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I had to let that thing go. Yeah. Um, but, you know, lots of lessons learned. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like it was a good experience for you to have? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Focus on what you're doing. Yeah. Um, I, I think the only way that I will be in that, because I love Richard Branson, you know, he's got so many different things going on. However, I wasn't focusing on the fact that Richard Branson became successful with one specific project and was able to totally be disconnected from that project and work on multiple ones where I had way too many irons in the fire to be effective. And boy, if, if it's not your skin in the game, it's, it's just hard to trust that other people are going to take it as seriously as you, even though they have ownership, it was yeah. just given to them. So, right. so it wasn't so much the product, it was the people. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, it was the, the people. The product well, was a good idea. That's the quickest yeah. way to sink a ship, you know, is if people just don't don't hold up. So how long ago was this? I mean, you had the distillery was going on at this time, no? This project was going in our last podcast. Was it? It was, it was, it was in the launch phase. Yeah. In our last podcast. But I, you know, of course I didn't talk about it because it was, you know, it was a different operation sure. and not related to so the So how distillery. did you handle that crash? I mean, did you, did you get heavily depressed or I mean, how did you it was, pull your bootstraps? You up? have all the alcohol to get a drinking problem. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was very depressing because literally some of that money that I had was really, you know, not necessarily even mine. I still had some debt and, you know, now I owe my mom and yeah, yeah, it was really depressing. Sure. Um, so what'd you do? Uh, well, I, I just focused on my own mental and physical wellness. That was really all I could do. And, and I, I've always been, uh, I, I've always been about a morning routine. You know, you need your time. You need that time for creativity to arise. You need that time to work out the demons, whatever you want to call it. But, um, you know, I, I love having my time in the morning to have some, uh, you know, a little bit of cardio exercise, I, I uh, rings and I love like, uh, Wim Hof breathing techniques and cold showers. I like to suffer a little bit. Ooh, isn't that like a Tony Robbins thing? Tony Robbins does that as well. Yeah. Um, mm. so what is your, let's go through it. your morning routine before you give too much away. What do you, do you have like a set routine that you, well, when you wake up, you do this and, and, uh. There's kind of a fill in the blanks okay. a lot of the times uh, that I, I might do uh, two or three of these things. And but, you know, uh, the next day I might do two or three I got other you. other things. Uh, but normally I, I like to wake up and right when my alarm goes off or oftentimes, uh, you know, two or three minutes before the alarm goes off, I just wake up. I put my feet on the floor and I drink a big glass of water and then um, I go downstairs and um, I'll change into uh Say on a say this morning, change into something that I can just go out for a, a run, which is really a walk. But um, normally I'll just go out for a couple of miles, but I like to walk in the hills. And so normally anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of a mile, I do wind sprints. And um, then I'll come back to uh, do some ring exercises. I have some. What, gym- are, the, what are the ring exercises? Uh, I just have some gymnast rings. Okay. Um, either, uh, I'll either go downstairs in my man cave and, and do some ring exercises or outside. I have a pull-up bar that I've got built. That's I'll, intense. Um, I'll do, uh, uh, bar exercises like wow. muscle ups and dips and pull-ups and just, you know, things like that. At least a few minutes of meditation, possibly some, uh, breathing exercises where you'll just like say, take 30, you know, really deep breaths push out that last breath and then do some type of exercise on that hold while the air is out. 
Wow. Um, where it might be a ring exercise. It might just be some push ups. but I like to do two or three cycles of that. Just get myself really charged up and then go take a cold shower. And uh, yeah, I normally just get in the shower, turn the cold on, get totally wet, shampoo, rinse that off, totally soap up, rinse all of that off. Make sure I'm totally cold. Any part that feels oh, warm, man. make sure that's, that's cold. And then I'll warm it up just to get the soap fully off my body. Cause sometimes your pores squeeze up so tight that yeah. they'll hold in the soap. I don't even do that much in a whole day. <laughs> like, honestly, <laughs> holy cow. <laughs> no, That's amazing. You're, you're a man after my own heart. How long have you been doing this, Tim? How long has this been kind of going on for you? Uh, at least, at least two to three years. Okay. Some version of that. I've always had some kind of morning routine. Uh, there's, there's also other things that can get thrown in. I like to write. Sometimes I think I'm funny, so I'll try to write something funny. Sometimes I might just write a diary entry. Sometimes I might write a song. Um, but just putting in some kind of time of, of, of uh, you know, being creative. Did you notice a life change when you started incorporating a lot of this stuff? Yeah, my outlook is, is definitely better. Um, you know, as you guys know, I have a lot of partners. And, um, and as the company's grown up around me, we have to be realistic about what we pay Timmy because Timmy does production. He's not the general manager. He's not making these huge decisions. So I'm still, I'm not complaining about it at all. Um, Yeah, sure. Um, But we use Steve, uh, you know, as a general manager um, Mm -hmm. and uh, we use Steve and Michael page as uh, you know, as our brand representative. Um, We have uh, Audra Norby who takes care of all of our events uh, boy, we've got Topher and Jesse who are uh, production assistants. We've got a lot of people that I want to pay them as much as we possibly can. And um, I still consider myself last in line. I Believe me, I'm not hurting, but sometimes it sure would be nice to make those six plus figures and not worry about anything. But um, Sometimes that mindset, uh, you can almost get into like this lacking mindset and just, you know, depressed and God, I can't believe we pay those guys this much and I should be here. And, sure. you know, mm-hmm. I'm, we've been doing this for 10 years. And I think that's normal company. for almost everybody to yeah. go through at some point. Yeah. It's easy to get into that mindset. So yeah. having some type of, you know, just daily routine for myself kind of takes me out of that. And those things seem so much uh, more silly. To me, and I can laugh, you know, laugh a little bit at myself uh, rather than whatever, just being down. I do want to ask you, though, a few questions uh, Ogden related. We didn't really get into Ogden, and typically I'll ask people that come on the podcast, you know, like, what's fun in Salt Lake City? I want to talk about Ogden for a minute. Oh, I'm glad. That's where you reside, you know? I mean, we do have a love for Ogden. There's a few good people. That have come out of Ogden that I'm aware of, and but. I'm going to try some Madame Pedersen. Yeah, I was, just, I was while you actually just talk. looking yeah. over there and saying, "You guys haven't even been sipping." I'm smelling your... it, it's now, delicious. Now you haven't even had this before, right, no, Chris? I've never had it. Awesome. Yeah. Tell me what your uh, what your thoughts are on it. It's <laughs> okay. Hold on, hold on. <gasps> it's stronger. It is 88 than the vodka. Proof. <laughs> it just, I just had to breathe. It's actually really good, but it was def- it definitely caught me off guard. <laughs> now, here's a question, and it made me think of it because Chrissy's drink of choice is tequila. Would you mm-hmm. ever make a tequila? Can you do that? No, not technically. You can make an agave spirit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as, you know, with my business structure and manufacturing process. You just can't do it there. It's, yeah, it, it's, it's just, it's, it's a bridge too far and I'm not. Willing to cross it. Yeah, I'm just not willing to cross that gotcha. one. Gotcha. That's kind of a real special type of thing, huh? Yeah. Well, our friends over um, in the valley, uh, they make uh, an agave spirit that is quite good. Um, and they, Who's rather, this? Who's... I'm, I'm drawing a blank and I'll, I'll think about them in just a minute. They're in Huntsville and, um, you know, they've got, uh, they've got a great agave spirit, um, but they make it from, uh, they use an agave syrup rather than processing the piñas oh, like right. you would in Mexico. Mm-hmm. They take an, a, a agave spirit ferment it and distill it. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a great product, but it's, it's not necessarily, you know, just in my wheelhouse of, yeah. of things when I like to be able to look at a brand, uh, or look at some, uh, a product that is thriving that people like 
and I try to think about how can I make something not only that tastes better, but、uh, a brand that's as equally or better sexy, and then and, and then a better price. I、and、like for people to kind of locally sustainable. Yeah, I mean agave isn't really it. It doesn't flourish. No, up here. So that makes sense. Yeah, it would be really difficult to you know grow pinos up here, and and、mm-hmm. and just because of the fact uh, uh, to, the name is、uh, is held by geography,、uh, you know it, it has to be、uh, made in Mexico, and I believe in the Jalis- in Jalisco to you know to even be called tequila. Oh,、huh. interesting! I, see, I didn't even know that. Well, I, mean, I just brought that up because that was that's Chrissy's hey, drink. I mean, I, I'll it, always take it. There's nothing wrong with a shot of tequila, though. No, it's、know? wonderful. And it's New World <laughs> Distillery. I don't know why that. Oh yes,、uh, I've heard the name. I don't know why that.、Uh, yeah, I just blanked out for a second. But yeah,、uh, Ashley and Chris Cross, great couple. Chris was. Is that really his name, Chris Cross? Yeah, Chris Cross. Our you know what? Babies, you know what? <laughs> one of our baby's favorite songs is "Jump" by Chris Cross.、So. What, what'll <laughs> the Mac Dad make you do? Yeah. yeah. Jump, yeah. Jump, jump. Okay, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> he must have. Was he born way before the band was together? Way before. <laughs> he must have been. Way before. That's amazing. The, yeah, he's a, he's a cool dude. He、uh, was,、uh, yeah, F sixteen pilot.、Uh, he he retired from Hill Air Force Base. And funny thing is, I haven't actually talked to him about it, but there's a possibility that I. Actually Actually, loaded bombs on his plane. Oh wow! At,、uh, at That's one cool. Time. Yeah, That's awesome.、Wow. Let's talk Ogden. I、okay. want to talk Ogden, Ogden because I, 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 I want to mention that I need to try Underground. Oh, you, you've never tried it? I've never tried it,、like、and I'm not interested. I mean, usually because I don't like Jaeger,、hmm. but listening, listening to the last episode and the story behind it made me really interested, and I think I'm going to grab a bottle. Yeah,、oh, if I wish I would have known that. Um, yeah, we can definitely speak to underground. I mean, it's、um, and I think what most people think, just like what Chris says when they say it's like Jaeger, it's it's technically an herbal bitter liqueur, and there's、mm-hmm. lots of them. And、uh, but the funny thing is, is in the United States,、um, Jaegermeister seems to be the most popular herbal bitter liqueur there is for sure. And so rather than even、uh, using that name, herbal bitter, people just say Jaeger. Yeah.、Um, yeah. I really thought that I had a chance with Underground to introduce a very similar product,、um, but you know I focused on half of the sugar and、um, and, a, and an urban spice blend that was a little bit more palatable, a little bit more balanced, rather than just right in your face licorice. Right,、uh, I that's the thing I have a, a problem a lot with. More, however,、mm. there is a lot of licorice there. Right,、um, right. But it's a lot thinner, and it's eighty proof versus. Seventy, which is Jaeger, it's a little bit stronger, but it still tastes a lot smoother. But、huh. I want to switch gears really quick into the Madame Paterini gin since you just tried it. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it seemed like you'd almost、uh, drink some gasoline. Maybe you, maybe you, maybe you <laughs>、okay. breathed in a、I、little bit. Been,、right、I think you I breathed、it. in. That's the、yeah. problem. I did. I breathed. It's actually really good, though. That's the thing. I know I I sounded a little bit dramatic, but it, it tastes good. Well, thank you. I didn't want to make.、Um, Kind of just what you would expect when you say gin.、Um, I really wish we had some tonic so you could try it in the tonic to unlock the.、Uh, Don't you have some of that blend? I just water. Oh, I do. Out in the other room. Okay, I just tried it again. If you want to go get it, I, I can always. That it does not taste like soap. I can go get it. Does most gin taste like soap? To me, it tastes like soap. And that's probably the heavy amount of juniper,、uh, coriander, cardamom, caraway. Those are really heavy flavors that、mm-hmm. you'll often find in your typical gins, which this has those. However, very much more balanced, more flavor forward is bergamot,、mm. uh, Nigerian ginger, and Sicilian lemon.、Uh, those three、That's、are what sitting the lemon. really are, are sitting much more forward on it. It makes、yeah. a great refreshing gin and tonic. Yeah, I I can actually tell. I just tried it again. Now understanding what I was getting into, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so used to Five Wives at this point. So, if you went to a bar, Tim, what would you order? Like, what's your drink when you go out to the bar?、Um, I'm a really simple guy.、Um, most likely a shot of Underground. Normally, about nine times out of ten,、um, it's going to be like an Evolution Amber or a Cherny Bock. Um, I'm really very、so like、much a beer guy. shot in a beer guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a big fan of of a shot in a beer. I love love starting out my night with underground and then nursing a beer. And I'm I think I'm a little bit different.、Uh, whereas I like 
the challenge that Utah brewers are faced with the lower alcoholic content because I can drink these session beers all night long, slowly, and, uh, you know, and still keep my wits about me. Sure, sure. Let's talk Ogden. Want to get there real quick yeah. here. Ogden's getting pretty cool, man. Like, it really is. And, and I'm not just saying that because you're here, but uh, if I was to come up there for a day, what would you tell me to check out? I mean, or, or, or somebody else that's listening, what would you say, hey, you know what, do this today? Oh, well, if you just wanted to come up for a light hike. I would say take a drive uh, over to 29th Street, drive east until you get to the very top. There's a nice little parking lot and a trailhead. You can take a look at a trail map just to make sure, but um, it I think you can pretty much uh, walk up to the trail and, and get there. But take a hike up to Waterfall Canyon. It's beautiful. I mean, it's maybe a mile and a half, uh, it, even if that. But uh, it's a little bit steep. It's a little bit challenging, but just enough to where even a novice hiker is going to, you know, have to, you know, take a couple of steps up that are maybe above your knee, you know, and, you know, and, and you know, gain some elevation. But then, uh, you know, you're going to be in this really tight spot, not seeing anything, but you can hear the water and then boom, you emerge and there's this huge waterfall. Wow. Uh, it's beautiful, uh, beautiful view. Uh, it's just far enough. I think to, you know, you get that sense of accomplishment. You're somewhere special and, uh, yeah, it only took you maybe 25 minutes to get there. I have to go check that out, Chris. Oh yeah. What about favorite places to eat up there? What's, what's good up in Ogden, Tim? Oh man, there are a lot. And, um, if you're a sushi fan, Tona sushi on 25th street is, uh, is fantastic. And, I mean, Rooster's uh, Brewery, even though um, they've been around, well, actually, even though I don't even know why I said that, Rooster's has got, you know, just a great menu. You can get a great beer um, and, you know, they've got a nice patio environment, but I, I don't even, I, I'm kind of nervous about even picking out restaurants because I there would. There's so many good ones. There, there are so many good ones. Uh, focusing on just 25th street, um, that I would say any person coming from Salt Lake, hop on the train, you know, come up to the main station, walk over to 25th street. You can start at the lighthouse lounge, even though it's a bar, they've got great food. But if you're in, if you want to have a fine dining experience, we have fine dining experiences. If you want to sit up on a rooftop and watch the sunset on the Salt Lake, we've got that at Alleged. If you want to get like this old school Jack Kerouac experience, you know, you're going to get that at the Kokomo or even older school, um, you know, dollars on the ceiling, low ceiling. Um, you, you're going to get that at the historic, uh, that cool college bar with uh, great pizza. You're going to get that at Brewski's. There's a brand new bar, uh, the Yes Hell, not a bar sign in sight, kind of reminds me a little bit of the lake effect, more of a little bit of adult crowd, lots of music starting at like seven o'clock. So you can actually have dinner and, and, you know, and see some live music. Uh, you know, that's, that's a great spot. It's Full really just, great places. Yeah. yeah. And, and this is all just walking distance. So it's, it's one thing that I it's a little bit more difficult in Salt Lake to do a bar crawl where you can just go from spot to spot to spot. 25th Street reminds me of like the West End in Dallas or 6th Street in Austin. You know, it's just like place after place after place. It's cool. And yeah, it it's it's a really great time. Um, and just, you know, uh, the street is... Uh, you know, if, if, if the place uh, doesn't match Ogdenite's taste as far as like good quality and low prices that they don't last so mm -hmm. you're you're going to get a you know you're going to get a very likely a great experience uh mm -hmm. you know just uh trying out any restaurant on 25th street um one place one of the oldest uh two-bit street uh yes. diner i love that penny allred she, bill allred's sister right? yeah, yeah bill's yeah, yeah bill's sister it's you walk into that place and it's just like it's the late 1800s you know they've got this old school bar that you know just like uh uh floor to ceiling almost and um you know just a really kind of quaint small town atmosphere but just fantastic food and not a bad price and yeah it's it's a it's such a cool street i love that street what about wasn't there a place what was that place we were going to go check out with like full like of taxidermy a, or yeah something a taxidermy like restaurant because i i have a secret uh desire to learn taxidermy oh and i need so, to buy you the book bad taxidermy yeah so i uh 
I, I you know, it's just a thought. I, I bet you the first time I try to cut open a rat or something like that, it will just <laughs> the whole desire will be gone. But, but there is there's a restaurant in Ogden that does that. We have a we have a listener in Ogden, Michelle. Mm-hmm. Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. Are you talking about the prairie schooner? Maybe that's it. Maybe is that place any good? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If you're a fan of a, you know, a good steak and and you want to eat in a covered wagon. <laughs> um, I actually really do. So let's make like this legitimately happen. Legitimately a covered wagon. Absolutely. That would be and, yeah. so fun. Like at- your own atmosphere. private. Yeah, of- yeah, yeah. Your own private covered wagon. Wow. Let's yeah. go do that. Is that uh, that's yeah. in Ogden? Yeah. All right, yeah. We'll, yeah let's do is. a second honeymoon <laughs> second. in Ogden. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Anything you would change about Ogden, Tim? No, I don't think so. Um, it's, it's great. I mean, there's, there are just tons of hiking trails, sure. multiple reservoirs. You've got snow basin, powder mountain, um, even Nordic Valley, just, you know, right over the hill. It's, it's really just, everything you want to do. Yeah. Is yeah. There. It's everything, everything I want to do. I, I don't get down to Salt Lake as often as I would like. Um, just because, you know, I am busy. I, I do have, uh, you know, normally quite a full day. And then I have a, uh, six year old boy and, and wife that, uh, you know, are, are normally, uh, you they know, want asking, a little bit of your time. Yeah. Right? They're asking for yeah. my time. Uh, <laughs> Makes sense. But, uh, yeah, it, Ogden has got a, it's got a lot to offer. You still playing music underground cash, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're still playing. That's when I met you. I met you at one of your shows at the ice, ice house. Yeah. We met yeah. at the yeah. ice house. It was so yeah. great. I loved it. Oh, awesome. I'm glad you yeah. liked it. It's, it's still fun. Um, this, uh, what is it? June 1st, we'll be playing the lighthouse, um, to mark our third anniversary. It'll be the fourth time playing on that date. Um, our first show was, I believe it was the beginning of June. Um, it's for the, uh, the Ogden car show where 25th street is closed down and, you know, just lots of cool cars. So you get a built in crowd and then what better than some Johnny cash? Um, well, it's, I mean, it's a great show. Same lineup, really same, same people playing with you. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much the same people. We've, we have a few replacements, you know, to fill in, uh, when we need, but um, mainly, yeah, Nate Chapel, Cameron Goldsberry, and Jesse Hodshire uh, yeah, making up the band, and um, yeah, yeah, we. I, th- I think it's gotten. Uh, I think it has definitely gotten better. We like to have a little bit of fun, you know, throwing in some songs that, of course, that aren't necessarily Johnny Cash, but. Um, yeah. You do De- uh, Depeche Mode. I know you have a yeah, yeah, Depeche which, Mode, which was a Johnny Cash cover. Sure, yeah, um, Personal Jesus, right? Yeah, but yeah, of course we, you know, we add a little bit more flair to it. And, sure. Uh, <laughs> well, I've had a great conversation, Tim. I, anything else before we completely wrap this sh- podcast up? I know we've kind of bounced all over the place and and all of that, but uh, I'm. Just, was really excited to bring you back on. I know here. this was super fun. I nope. know that there were some other notes in here, but we haven't gotten to. But it doesn't really matter, you know. Well, you know, um, I think something that I'm really excited about right now is, you know, I, I have been spending a lot of time in the lab, and I've got uh, multiple projects that I'm really hoping will see the light of day. But one that will, um, we're going to be bottling a new Porter's flavor. As long as uh, everything works out right, uh, this week we should be bottling uh, Porter's Huckleberry. What? Ooh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Looks like Daddy's getting back on the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that sounds incredible. So talk to talk about this here. What what do we got? Well, it's um, I'm using the same three year old Canadian whiskey, but I've I played around with a multitude of different flavor houses. You know, there, there are a lot of people out there that will, will take extracts and, um, and, uh, you know, put their own twist on it. And so I've, I've, I've been dealing with a lot of different flavor houses and, but I've, I've found this, this Huckleberry that I think is, you know, very fitting for the brand. It's really tasty. Uh, of course, I went through a, a lot of different berries and, uh, um, as far as like varietals of, uh, you know, blackberries and blueberries and whatnot, but the huckleberry was definitely seemed to be the right fit. I mean, I, I think I can still, I can see Val Kilmer saying that he'll be, uh, your huckleberry, you know, spinning around that old <laughs> empty coffee cup. <laughs> see, and I think of huckleberry pie from uh-huh. strawberry shortcake. Yeah, but that's that's something uh, that's something really new that is uh, yeah just happening happening this week. I'm really excited for that. So, how long would that take to hit the liquor stores in? Most likely, uh, since we haven't received our May order, 
yet, but the DABC has already listed the product. Um, I bet we'll be seeing it in June. Okay. But um, as long as everything go goes as planned, I mean, the, the product is uh, is blended in, in the tank. We just have a few things that we're waiting on. But as long as uh, everything comes in, um, it will be for sale in the distillery store soon as soon as next, Friday. As soon as Friday, yeah, yeah. yeah. But which by the time this airs, sure, sure, um, it'll be, yeah. they will be, it should available. be in the store, it's in the stores. But that that is awesome. I was just, and now you know what to get me for my birthday. Well, and that's why her birthday's <laughs> in June. See, perfect here. Oh, nice. June June ninth, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Good job. <laughs> Good job. No, but it, I was just curious, like even how long typically uh, liquor takes to get, uh, you know, from being to you know. Made at the at your warehouse into the liquor stores. It looks like it's a pretty quick process. Well, that's because I made products months sure. ago on mm-hmm. a small mm-hmm. scale, uh, you know, in the lab to present. Um, so yeah, it, it has been months in process. But now that we're we're kind of on that final uh, final run, right? I just imagine you with like a lab coat and and maybe a few rats in a, an aquarium, like giving them. <laughs> <laughs> little drops of liquor and okay this will mess them up you know you're, they're too drunk to drive you really should come by and see the lab I, sometime i want to work in that you lab know, you know what's funny is we talked about that the last time yeah. you were here i was like oh ryan let's go up and well, check out and your chris place. and i have talked about it so often we're yeah. like we have to go up there i mean we've talked about it for ever two years yeah pretty probably. much the first time we got together yeah, yeah guys it's not that far north no it really I isn't know, what, just, so what's you know. what's the like what's the best day to go up there Oh heck! Just about any, any day, day of the week. Any now. day of the yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, the weekdays. I'm working. Um, we're bottling just about every day yeah. now. Um, but it, we've actually kind of made the crew a little bit smaller just to keep my two full time guys, you know, busy all of the time. And so we've we've almost always got something going in the bottle every day. So it's it's pretty cool just to see the line running and uh, yeah. Well, we want to hike water, right? Yeah. The one of what now? We want to hike water out. I didn't volunteer that one, <laughs> but uh, now yeah, what, we do. You post a lot of videos on your personal Facebook, right? I've seen some bottling. Now, can anybody add you as a friend? Is that can I put that link, or would you rather yeah. not? No, that's that's actually just fine. I I really like the fact that um, on my personal page, I think just because of uh, whatever analytics or logarithms and whatnot with mm -hmm. with Facebook. I, I think a lot of the stuff that I post on my personal page gets a lot more play and, 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 you know, people see it more than they would see. Well, and that's, that's what I do with mine too. Obviously I just didn't know some people are kind of weird about that. You know, I didn't Mm -hmm. want to send all these people over because that's one of my favorite things about following you, Tim, is all the interaction you do with the hiking for the water inside bottling the stuff. And I mean, you get to see the whole process. Are you, are you Facebook friends? Yeah? I see. think. Oh, okay. I think we're Facebook friends, but you never show up in my feed, so I'm gonna go like all of your stuff. Uh, see if that'll, it works. That, <laughs> that'll, that'll I'm trying to figure there. out the algorithms. Honestly, Facebook, I'll never figure it out, man. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I will either. But I love normally on like Saturdays or Sundays if I'm in the mood, I'll I'll play a song on my back deck, you know, and and um. And, you know, put that up or, you know, mm-hmm. do, do videos at the spring or I'm, or check this out. I'm distilling this or, you know, Hey, we're bottling that. Or I just like to make it as personal as possible for people to see. I, th- I think sometimes you see a brand and it just seems like this entity, you know, it's just right. like so faceless and, but no, it's just Timmy, you know, I'm, I have a love and passion for, you know, making great spirits and, and yeah, here I am on a regular daily basis. And I, yeah, I, I would hope that it, you know, it just comes off that way that I'm, I'm not necessarily bragging about what I'm doing. It's no. just like, here's, you're sharing your life experience. Yeah, here's what's, here, yeah, here's what's going on. Yeah, you, you don't, that's you don't awesome. come across that way. You just come across as a, as a regular dude that's enjoying booze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're passionate. How, how can people find you otherwise? Uh, what's the websites for the uh, Ogden Zone or whatever? Oh, you can type in any of the brands, uh, yeah, ogdenzone.com or Fiwise Vodka or Madame Paterini Gin. Or uh, Porter's whiskeys, um, yeah, any of those will get get you to us. And you know, we have a store with uh, you know shirts and hats and koozies and and all of that sort of thing. And I'll put that uh, all those uh, information at IamSaltLake dot com with this mm-hmm. episode. And I haven't tried Underground, but I can vouch that everything that I've tried, which is almost everything else, is amazing. If I would have known that, I would have brought a bottle because <laughs> that one has won more medals. And really? it's actually taken like, you know, best in category and mm-hmm. double gold medals. And um, well, I'm just going to have to go buy one. It's very unique. 
in the fact that it's an American herbal liqueur. There really aren't a lot. No, there right, really isn't right. a lot of competition with yeah. that one for you. Yeah, yeah. And it just and it just keeps growing. Yeah. It's one of those brands that I think it's almost great that we don't have a whole bunch of money to market it because it's underground and the bottle and the logo and everything kind of speaks for itself. It's simple, and, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so in whether it's it's Utah or Montana or Idaho or Wyoming or Oregon, I mean it people in Oregon love underground. That's awesome. And you know, we, I don't have the budget to be up there marketing and spending money on it, but it just sells because I think people just get it Yeah. Mm-hmm. once they try it, you know, then, uh, you know, the, it, it speaks for itself. Yeah. Do you have any questions? And one more oh, question, Chrissy, man, I have too many. Okay. Can you give us one piece of advice to leave with our listeners? Life advice, change someone's life right now. Um, yeah, be really careful what you wish for. Um, and I know that sounds, that sounds kind of silly, but in this day and age, there's nothing that you can't do is all you have to do is just, you know, figure out what's the next step. I uh, know if you want to become a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer, there's a very set step. Uh, you know, there's a, there's just a set pattern in place on how you do that. But if you have some other type of aspiration, I think something that gave me tons of fuel before I was in this business was just the amount of time that I would spend on my own free time, like just kind of geeking out and studying and, you know, and trying to figure out all sorts of details about something that I had no entry into. But then once I got into the business, it's like, wow, I'm in the business. Now I'm making spirits and now I'm doing this. You have to make sure (laughs) that what it is you're shooting for, you actually, you know, want to do. Because, you know, I've been doing this for several years and I have not had my overnight success story yet. You know, you, you have to really be careful because um, realistically, if you set your mind to do something, you're going to do it. Uh, it, it, of course, it, of course, requires perseverance Yeah. Um, and just a dogged determination that no matter what roadblock that you hit, I know that there were multiple times in trying to uh, research this business. Um, I would meet somebody that would tell me how stupid I was or how I didn't have deep enough pockets or I could never make something like this work. I think that, yeah, those are great indicators that you just move forward and keep at it. But, you know, whatever it is that you, you know, that you want to do, um, <laughs> you, you can. It's a good Thank place you. to end the show. Thank you so much, Tim. Oh, it's my pleasure. Chrissy, thanks for <laughs> Chris. the, thanks for the, uh, the shot. We'll catch up in a couple more years, Tim. Thanks for having me. (laughs) You bet. All right. Many thanks again to Timothy Smith for coming back on the podcast and allowing us to catch up with him and find out what's going on with Ogden's own distillery. Be sure to head over to IamSaltLake.com slash 332 for all the links and information to connect with Timothy and to find out more about Ogden's own distillery. Hey, it's the first of the month. It's the first episode of the month. And you know what that means? It's time to give some love to our Patreon supporters. Really quick, if you're unfamiliar with Patreon, I know I've talked about this here on the podcast, but basically it's like an ongoing Kickstarter where you, the listener, sign up to give a donation every month to the podcast. We have different increments like $1, $2, $5, $10, I don't know, $50. And uh, every dollar really helps keep the podcast going. And, And trust me when I say that your donations are very much appreciated and also greatly needed Uh, So let me run down the list here really quick of our awesome Patreon supporters. These are uh, the top-notch people that are uh, supporting the show. Anyway, John Miller, Ryan Prince, Three Irons SLC, Brandy Burnham, Nicole Davison, Alex Santi, Riley Padilla, Zach Shutt, Brandon Hill over at Mountain Standard Time Marketing, Will Dugdale, Jared Aguilar, Brittany Hemingway, Jeff Hadfield, Michael Beck, Eric Tomorrow from over at Mediocre Show, Jeff Hat, John and Nikki from New Zealand. Look at that. Even, even some supporters uh, from over in New Zealand. And then Alan Martindale in Sana. And who else we got? Michelle Stevens Williams, which she's a new uh, Patreon supporter. Dirt in Your Skirt podcast. Christopher Heiser and Jay Chambers. Wow, that is a uh, 
That is a list of Patreon supporters, Chrissy. I I love those guys. I, I appreciate so much. I want to just give everybody a group hug. I mean, seriously. I like that idea. Uh, if, so if you want your name mentioned as a Patreon supporter, I mean, little as $1, uh, go to, uh, I think it's IamSaltLake.com slash Patreon. That will forward you over to our Patreon page where you can become an ongoing uh, supporter of the show, help out with, uh, with equipment and uh, keeping the lights on over here uh, with the podcast. Before we leave this episode, there are a few ways you can contact us or connect with us further. You can visit us at IamSaltLake.com or you can come join our group at IamSaltLake.com forward slash group. That'll bring, us to, that'll bring you to our Facebook group where we have lots of cool conversations about Salt Lake and all the things we're doing here. You can also just visit our Facebook page at IamSaltLake.com forward slash Facebook. It'll take you straight there. Or you can email one of us directly. My email is Chrissy at IamSaltLake.com. That's K-R-I-S-S-I-E. And, or Chris at IamSaltLake.com. C-H-R-I-S. C-H-R-I-S. At Easy peasy. IamSaltLake.com. <laughs> All right. Many thanks again to our sponsors for this episode, Five Wives Vodka. Remember, pick up a bottle tonight on your way home. Stop by the liquor store. Pick up a bottle. You know you're going to need it. Or maybe even this upcoming weekend when you go over to your buddy's house for a barbecue. Also, uh, many thanks to our sponsors, the Salt Lake Barber Company. Head on over to saltlakebarberco.com to schedule your haircut. Many thanks to Access Coworking Space for their hospitality. And many thanks to you, the listener, for coming back week after week, episode after episode. You all have a great week. Get out and enjoy the city. And always remember, always remember, support local. And good night, Grammy.